First premiering on October 26th of 1987, the sixth episode of Star Trek The Next Generation turns in one of the stronger showings of the first season. Here is my retro review of Star Trek The Next Generation, Episode 6, where no one has gone before. The episode begins with the Enterprise being sent two warp drive specialists charged with increasing the efficiency of the Enterprise's warp engines. Riker voices some concerns, saying that the equations that they were sent ahead of the arrival of the specialists didn't make any sense. The two specialists arrive on board, Eddie Bravo impersonator Kalinsky, and an individual known simply as The Traveler. Played by Stanley Kamel and Eric Minyuk, Riker and some chief engineer nobody cares about question Kaczynski about his methods. They question whether what he's saying is actually possible. His equations make no sense to them. He rebukes the two officers, saying that they simply don't understand what he does. But do you cast off your ignorance and allow me to continue? Meanwhile, Wesley discusses with the Traveler Kaczynski's methods. Both Wesley and the Traveler know that it probably won't work. Kaczynski gets to go ahead anyway, and they begin the experiment. The Traveler gets distracted, causing the Enterprise to accelerate uncontrollably. What are you doing? In just a few seconds, the Enterprise warps over two and a half million light years to Galaxy M33. Kaczynski takes credit for the mistake, claiming to have invented a new form of warp drive. A visibly exhausted traveler confides in Wesley that while Kalinsky did have a part in what happened, it was in fact the traveler that got them there. Picard orders Kaczynski to take them back, but the now exhausted traveler is unable to achieve this. They try anyway, and the traveler, unable to hold the warp field stable, brings them outside the confines of reality. Where they end up is a space beyond space where their very thoughts are capable of conjuring things into existence. Several members of the crew begin to see hallucinations brought into physical form. Worf sees a Targ, Tasha sees a cat, other crew members who go unnamed see various things. These hallucinations are tied to the person's thoughts. The Traveler reveals that he is an alien which trades his advanced knowledge of warp theory in order to get passage on Federation starships. He also discusses with Captain Picard about Wesley Crusher's potential, and that he needs to be encouraged. Although the Traveler's attempt to return the Enterprise to its own reality is successful, he disappears in the process. Now safe back in their own existence, Picard takes the Traveler's advice in dealing with Wesley and invites him to the bridge. Picard gives Wesley a commission of acting Ensign, and the episode ends. In a season where you have to take what you can get, unfortunately this is probably the best you're going to end up seeing. It is not an example of the best of Star Trek you're going to end up seeing in the next generation, but neither is it an example of the absolute worst. It does offer some puzzle and some intrigue. It also is a little bit humbling to know that even with humans being in this hyper-advanced state, being able to trek across the galaxy and explore the unknowns of space, they are still considered to be rather primitive. The Traveler even says that they did not warrant any sort of observation or attention until very recently. What wonderful arrogance. There is no record because we have not visited you before. Why not? Well, because up until now, if you'll forgive this, you've been uninteresting. I do unfortunately feel that there is a major missed opportunity in the production of this episode. They do eventually reach a space where their imagination is brought into some sort of reality, and I feel like that's really where the episode should have spent a long portion of its time. With the ability to manifest a person's greatest desires or a person's greatest fears, it's possible to have constructed the episode around the idea that everybody has to sort of focus on and kind of deal with their greatest demons inside of themselves. For example, they could have conjured up a situation out of Worf's imagination, showing on how he has difficulty trying to exist inside of a culture outside of his own. Or they could have elaborated a little bit more on how there is a potential physical threat to everybody on board the Enterprise, seeing how as at any point somebody could, out of their own imagination, conjure in something such as a warp core breach or something that puts the entire ship at risk. Unfortunately, all we get are a bunch of disparate small scenes, which do little more than give slight character development 
for some of the main characters, as well as a couple of examples of characters who are just extras. The only scene that actually does this concept justice is when Captain Picard comes up to a manifestation of his deceased mother. The captain is, as always, the professional individual, and he attempts to question her as to what's going on and how he can get away. Picard's true emotions of the situation finally come out when he gets momentarily distracted by Riker and he shows frustration. When he notices that the manifestation of his mother has disappeared, you see him succumb to his emotions. For this brief period, you see the unflappable Captain Picard grieving the death of his mother all over again. It is this emotion that they try to convey with both Worf with his Targ and Tasha with her cat, but they only really succeeded with Captain Picard. Overall, the only real significant impact this episode has on the series as a whole is this being the point where Captain Picard comes to understand that he needs to encourage Wesley Crusher to develop himself. This feels a little bit unnecessary to me. It had already been in previous episodes that the Captain had invited Wesley to the bridge, so we really didn't need this framing device to make him the acting ensign. Beyond that, we really didn't need another episode that just beats us over the head with the idea that Wesley is the Wonder Child. I did enjoy parts of this episode, and the parts that weren't so great really didn't do that much to bring down the overall quality. 3 out of 5.